On Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now, continuing on the issue of the president's return to Honduras. Yes, it was Saturday that President Zelaya returned. He had been ousted two years ago, on June 28, 2009. Hooded Honduran soldiers raided his home. They took him at gunpoint, kidnapped him, put him in a plane, and flew him to the U.S. military base in Honduras called Pomerola, then flew him out of the country to Costa Rica. Hundreds of Hondurans fled into exile, fearing for their lives. Among them, Rodolfo Pastor Fascal, who is the culture minister of Honduras. He's the author of many books. He's a social historian and writes regularly for Honduran newspapers. After he fled, Foskell was a visiting professor at Harvard University, where he taught courses on Latin American history. I spoke with Professor Foskell at a hotel where the delegation that accompanied Zelaya home to Tegucigalpa was staying. I asked Foskell about his views on the United States and his role in the coup. What do you think of the United States' role in all of this in your country, Honduras? Yeah, I, repeat, I think it's hideous. I, I, uh, I was trained, I was educated in the United States uh, as a young man. I, I went there to late high school and uh, to the university, in, in Tulane University, uh, Columbia College. And I was there in a period of time, in a historical period, in which I identified myself profoundly with this aspiration of democracy that was uh, concretely manifested in the black African movement to rescue their rights and uh, with the programs that uh, President Kennedy uh, was promoting in, in Latin America in general and in the United States. And I believed in American democracy because of this direct contact with this movement and uh, believed also in American democracy when President Kennedy, for example, after the former coup d'etat in, in 63, uh, severed relationships with the, uh, with the uh, military government. Uh, and in fact... In Honduras. In Honduras. And in fact, uh, he never authorized the reestablishment of relationships between the United States and the military regime in Honduras at that time. Uh, this was uh, something that inspired me confidence that it really mattered to him, uh, democracy. Uh, of course, President Johnson almost immediately reestablished relationships. The problem here is that, in fact, there is a direct contradiction between official discourse, the rhetoric, the image, the, the, uh, the, the, the ideology that the United States uh, pretends to represent in the world. Uh, and, and, and these instruments uh, of, of ideology and rhetoric it uses to combat uh, regimes in different countries around the world and what it actually does. It was, of course, uh, directly involved. Uh, of course, who uh, I'm not able to, 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 to signal and say that Ambassador Lawrence was directly involved in promoting the coup. Uh, some, some people believe that. Uh, I know for a fact that CIA operatives and military personnel of the United States uh, were in direct contact with the conspirators of the coup d'etat and aided uh, the conspirators of the coup d'etat. The coup was not something improvised. It was something that was laboriously and, and in a very punctilious manner prepared uh, in time so that from January onwards, you have this media campaign. All national newspapers, all major television uh, uh, chains and stations are involved uh, in this, in this uh, long period in a propaganda campaign against uh, the, the, the government, Celaya's government. And the propaganda campaign is a very curious uh, one. I'll, I'll give you uh, one example. Uh, one of the themes that was repeated in all media was that we were going to take all children away from uh, peasant parents because uh, we needed to educate them as uh, responsible socialist citizens. And that was our intention. 
which of course was completely you know, uh, uh, an absurd fabrication. Another was that we would going to take, in order to solve the housing problem in the country, we were going to take away from people who had more than one house, uh, the second house that they had, expropriate it, nationalize the property, and give it to people uh, without uh, living quarters. Or that, uh, inclusively, if we had more, if a person had more than one room or needed uh, no more than one room in, in his or her home, we would take, we would force them to take people in and house people uh, without any uh, kind of obligations. And supposedly, this was a Venezuelan law that we were going to be imitating in the Celaya government immediately after Constitutional Assembly government. And uh, the problem is that there is no such Venezuelan law, if you, as you can imagine. There never was any such Venezuelan law. And uh, so the, the, the whole thing is a fabrication. But it is not a local fabrication because we have no people in, in, in Honduras who are capable of organizing these uh, massive campaigns. It is something that was designed by specialists, by people who know what media wars and media campaigns uh, are put together and how they, they, how they function and how they work. Uh, now, who could have aided you know, the conspirators in this kind of campaign? Only the CIA. There, there is no other answer. There is no other possibility. See, it, it is a, a logical conclusion. I have many other uh, details of information. As a minister in the government, I, I was often invited and often also participated in uh, diplomatic activities, receptions, cocktail parties, these things that we lose so much time in when we're in government. And I was repeatedly approached by American military officers and, and, and diplomatic personnel who were trying to discover if I was uh, unsure of myself or um, unrestful with what we were doing in government and what our plans were for the future. And uh, repeatedly, the theme that came up was that our association with Chavez and Venezuela was uh, or seemed such a threat and such a profoundly disgusting uh, relationship to them, uh, which uh, I never understood why they, they would think that I would um, manifest myself against President Chavez. I may not like his personal style sometimes, but I, I respect him very much as a national leader of his own country, and, and I was very convinced, I am today as well, that the kind of aid President Chavez was giving our government through Petro Caribe and through ALBA was absolutely necessary at the time. But they were convinced that for ideological reasons I would uh, manifest myself in sympathy with their alarm. And if you had, what was your feeling they would have done? Well, maybe if I was a more sophisticated politician I should have uh, invented sympathy for their in and intentions and found out. I was not. I was always very clear and, and, and uh, very definitive. Uh, what we're doing is what is convenient to our national interest. It is something that is absolutely necessary under the circumstances. Uh, if you don't want uh, Petro Caribe to give us 40% credit on our uh, oil bill, give, give us the credit and we'll, we'll consider substituting. Uh, their aid for your aid, no? which n never came out. Mm. And so take it from there. Um, the coup happens. Um, the U.S. ambassador to Honduras, Lawrence, uh, within a few weeks has a cable to Washington, to the State Department, which we now know because WikiLeaks released it in the trove of U.S. government cables, that says the case in Honduras is open and shut case of a coup, illegal, unconstitutional, and what the supporters of the coup are saying, uh, their rights to have fomented a coup is absurd. Just that's to paraphrase this cable. You would not have known that from what the U.S. government officials were saying from President Obama to Hillary Clinton. 
it is a very interesting cable, of course. Uh, it was obviously done by a very brilliant legal mind who was profoundly knowledgeable of uh, Honduran laws and, and, and judicial traditions. It was not something that was improvised by uh, foreigners or uh, consultants uh, from outside. So he obviously, the, the ambassador obviously sought people who were knowledgeable in order to, to, to formulate this, this cable, to, to write this cable. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, however, you can see the United States has a very serious uh, relations problem with the coup. He, it is seen almost always and automatically, justly or unjustly, as being the uh, promoter and the author and, and the defender of the coup d'etat. But the coup d'etat has gone into uh, remission as, 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 as any kind of uh, legitimate instrument. No one in the rest of the Latin American community or even of the continental community accepts uh, the coup and uh, the United States has to solve the problem that it is seen as a uh, backer of the coup. No? Uh, and I think Lawrence's cable is, is uh, part of that, uh, of that uh, uh, dilemma and uh, seeks uh, a definition. But the problem with the American ambassador in Honduras is that he has within his embassy people working for the D, uh, DEA and people working for the CIA and he is not really in direct control of what these people are doing and they are also sending cables which WikiLeaks has still not sent, uh, published uh, giving their own version of what is happening as the people in South Command are also informing their superiors. And how does South Command fit into this Southern Command military? Well, remember, there had been a conflict about Palmerola. Uh, President Zelaya had expressed his intention of making the Palmerola airfield into a civilian airport. Because? Because we needed it, because the country needs it, because it is, uh, the, the, the airport here is dangerous. Beware, beware now that you're going to get on a plane. I, there, been, there have been so many accidents in this airport here. Uh, and the country needed uh, this kind of airport. Uh, there had been a very recent accident in which many people died in the airport here, and the president had announced the solution is to transform Palmerola, the American uh, Air Force Base, into a civilian airport, and we're going to proceed with that. And in fact, announced his intention to, uh, of asking collaboration of the American government in this process. But this uh, was uh, satisfactory to, to no one in, in, in the American government, and much less to Southcom. And one of, uh, of the uh, irritating elements in the relationship with Southcom was this. Uh, but there was all kinds of hallucinations about uh, military conflict between Colombia and Venezuela, and uh, the military threat of Venezuela, which was buying weapons from uh, Russia and, and, uh, and other uh, weapon makers uh, um, in around the world uh, so th there was the US was alleging th that's correct uh, and um, for whatever reasons was promoting uh, publicly as as a, as a problem and mm -hmm. so you have a process by which these other agents are uh, influencing their agencies and their agencies also pressuring and influencing the State Department to to change its course, to to uh, to find a solution, to uh, to do away with this uh, the initial uh, announcement of, of uh, President Obama himself uh, about a coup d'état and uh, the initial announcement by Hillary Clinton saying that the United States government would cooperate with the OAS in seeking a solution. When the solution that the OAS uh, uh, establishes, which is expulsion of the Honduran government from the Honduran state, from the organization, and uh, the demand that uh, the coup be reversed, uh, that the president uh, be reinstated in his office uh, in order to, to, to reaccept uh, the Honduran state in the organization, the United States decides that it, that, that will not